Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at the second derivative test. Um, I've got it all written out here just so we can kind of summarize it before we go through an example. Um, we're going to let f be a function such that f prime of c equals zero and the second derivative of f exists on an open interval that contains c. Alright, when we do this, if we test our value of c in our second derivative and it turns out to be positive, then f has a relative minimum at x equals c. All right, I always think of that as it's just the opposite. If it turns out to be greater than zero, then it's a minimum. To me, that seems opposite. Um, if the second derivative at c is less than zero, then f has a relative maximum at x equals c. So those are basically your two scenarios. Now, there is a third possibility. If the second derivative at c is exactly equal to zero, then your second derivative test fails. All that means is that f could have a relative maximum or a relative minimum or neither and you have to do some other investigation to find out what really is going on there. Um, when this happens um, you can go back and use first derivative test. All right, That usually seems to be about the simplest thing to do since you've already calculated your first derivative on this. Okay so let's take a look at an example here. Let's suppose um, you were needing to find the relative extrema using the second derivative test. All right, you're going to have some function. I've used um, f of x equals negative 3x to the fifth plus 5x to the third. All right, now, first of all, I need to find my critical numbers because this is where my relative extrema is going to live. So um, step one, I'm going to find my critical numbers. Okay, if you recall, finding critical numbers, you take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. So that's what I'm going to do. f prime of x. Looking up here, first derivative is going to be negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared. All right, now I need to set that equal to zero and solve to find those critical numbers. So negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared equals zero. Um, let's factor out the greatest common factor of 15x squared. That's going to leave me with a negative x squared plus one. All right, set both of those equal to zero. Clearly we can see x equals zero in this scenario. And when I set that equal to zero, I'm going to get a plus or minus one. All right, so those are my critical numbers. All right, and that's going to be where my relative extrema lives. So those are gonna be my values that I am going to test in my second derivative. All right, let's uh, go ahead and calculate our second derivative because we are gonna to need to use it for the second derivative test. Okay, so second derivative, um, coming up here looking at the first derivative, I can calculate second derivative from there. f double prime of x is going to equal negative 60x to the third plus 30x. So a pretty relatively simple second derivative there. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to test my critical numbers that I found in the second derivative, all right, in order to be able to use that second derivative test. So let's write it out. Test critical numbers in second derivative. All right, just going to take one of them at a time. Let's start with x equals 0. I'm going to test x equals 0 first. All right, so I'm going to plug that into my second derivative. So f double prime of 0. All right, I'm going to plug it in down here, and I'm going to see what I get. Well, if I plug in 0 there, plug in 0 there, I'm going to get clearly 0. All right, so first off, right off the bat, we got 1 equal to 0, which means the second derivative test fails on, uh, for determining at x equals 0 whether it's a max or a min or neither. All right, and that's okay, all right, because we, I'm kind of glad we kind of hit this. So now we can see what we need to do. Second derivative test fails. All right, I had said earlier when we were going through the theorem to um, then go back and use first derivative. So we've already got our first derivative calculated, so it's going to be relatively simple here. I'm going to go ahead and um, draw out a little number line here. I'm going to test 0. I would be testing this um, on my first derivative. This would be the interval from negative infinity to 0. This would be the interval from 0 to positive infinity. All right, so you're going to pick any negative number here and plug it into my first derivative. Okay, negative number, that's going to make this positive, so this whole term will still be negative. Putting a negative number in here, this will be positive, and this clearly is going to be a bigger negative number, so we know our first derivative will be negative in that interval. Coming over here, if I pick any positive number, it's not going to change my signs at all. 
whatever I put in this one obviously will be bigger than this term so again it is going to be negative all right when my first derivative goes from negative to negative that means that f of x is decreasing on that interval and it is also decreasing on that interval in which case I do not have a max or a min so neither max nor min okay so that one was the longest one taking care of that now let's test another um, critical number x equals 1 I'm going to plug that into my second derivative so plugging that into my second derivative now let's, uh, and here again, I don't need exact values, right? I just need to know if it's less than zero or greater than zero. If I put one in there, if I put one in there, clearly this is going to be a bigger negative number than this is over here. So overall, it's going to be less than zero or some negative number. That means it's always opposite. Think opposite. That's less than zero. So then that means that I'm going to have a max at x equals one. All right, plugging in the last value, x equals negative one. We'll plug that into our second derivative. And here again, I don't necessarily need an exact value. Plugging in a negative number here is going to give me a negative. Negative times negative. This overall term will be positive, And this is going to be negative. And clearly, this is the bigger term. So my second derivative at negative 1 is going to be greater than 0. Thinking opposite again, that means, therefore, at x equals negative 1, I have to have a minimum. Alright, so the only one that took a lot of work was x equals 0, and that was just because the second derivative test failed. Alright, now, um, locating, you know, like putting a final answer here so that everything is written nice and neat, your relative extrema, you could sum it up here. At um, Actually, let's even write these as ordered pairs. All right, because at x equals 0, I want to know, you know, at x equals 1, x equals negative 1, I want to know exactly what the point is. Okay, so let's take 0, plug it into the original function, because this is giving us clues about the original function. If I plug 0 back in there, I'm going to get the point 0, 0. So at the point 0, 0 on that original function, that is neither a max nor a min. Neither a max nor a min. Okay, now at x equals 1, let's find the actual point because it's going to be a max, so it's not going to do us any good if we don't know the actual point. So let's plug it back in here. Plug in a 1 in there. Let's see, that's going to be a negative 3 plus 5. It's going to give me um, 2. So at the point 1, 2, I'm going to have a max. Now let's plug in negative 1 into that original function, negative in there, still going to be negative, positive 3, and 2 is going to give me a negative 2, and that is a minimum. Okay, so sum, summarizing that as a final answer so you can clearly identify what your extrema is. Now, all of this is referring back to the original function. I'm using the second derivative test to give me clues about this original function if I didn't know how to graph it or sketch it or have a graphing calculator. So that's just one example of using second derivative tests to locate your relative extrema.